We are in Ohio and we have a brand new prototype RV that we just can't wait to show you. You see this box? This is the box that becomes that RV. An RV they call the B-Box. Want to see it? Come on along. Well, we are off to um, Willoughby, Ohio, which is just east of uh, Cleveland. And we're going to look at uh, a new RV from a friend of ours. And I can't wait to see it. He is very much into technology, what's new and what's exciting. And I'm anxious. Yep. We're going to um, Willoughby, Ohio, actually, and the headquarters of Advanced RV. We arrived after the factory had closed for the day, so we pulled into the back parking lot and spent the night there in our RV. Bright and early the next morning, we headed round to the front and went in for our preview of the new $380,000 RV called the B-Box. Welcome to the Advanced RV. Let's go in the office. Where's, where's the office? Right here, through the door. Whoa. Okay, Jen. The B-Box RV we came to see is indeed just that, a box made of insulated fiberglass composite and foam that's both off-grid and four seasons capable. It was designed by company engineers to attach to a very special kind of RV chassis. Understand the B-Box, let's talk about chassis. This is a van, this is a standard B. This is the Mercedes-Benz Sprinter chassis. There's another kind of chassis. It is called the cutaway chassis. This is also a Sprinter from Mercedes-Benz and this is the cutaway chassis. And you can look, look at this here. This, this is the, the chassis. And what many manufacturers do is they build on top of the chassis. They build essentially a, a motor home and then they bolt it on. Those are usually Class C's. But in building the B-Box, Advanced RV had one requirement. They wanted this to actually be a Class B, hence the B-Box. These are the exterior enclosures, so the tanks are all protected in this aluminum. It also becomes a crash barrier for a side impact if that, heaven forbid, ever happens. But the tanks are, are sloped, they're uh, embedded in insulation, they're both sloped to the center where they're joined at the lowest point with a three inch pipe, which has a uh, gravity drain, but also has a macerator and two valves so that you can open the valves, equalize the tanks if you want to use them as gray and black combined, or you can keep one valve open, closed at a time and have one as a 27 and a half gallon gray tank and 27 and a half gallon black tank. What about fresh water? Fresh water's on the other side in a single uh, unit and it's 50 gallon. And then under this tank is a loop of hydronic heat uh, thermostatically controlled. So when the heat's on in the van, the heat's on in the tank, the same thing with the gray and black tank. So they're actively heated, insulated tanks that uh, will take uh, very low temperatures. Is this a four season RV? Absolutely four season. I, I, we, we haven't calculated how cold this will go, but we think 20, 30 below zero, you can operate this without uh, putting antifreeze in the tanks and have full function. All the plumbing is inside. The uh, box itself is about R13 in that range with the windows, which are all insulated. So this is definitely four season. And here's the box, which will eventually be bolted on to that cutaway chassis. See, it really is a box. I'm in a B box right now. We're still working on it. Emily's doing her, uh, her magic. <laughs> and uh, the B box, although externally is a little bit narrower than a class B Sprinter motorhome, uh, and it has the same overall height, ceiling height, interior wise, the ceiling is 80 inches, and the width is, instead of 69 inches, it's 78 inches wide. So you can sleep sideways, 
And then the third thing about the box is that it has uh, uh, perpendicular walls so that there's a lot more volume, uh, storage volume and other things, but still within the constraints of a B-size van. One complaint that RVers have, and particularly with the Sprinter, is the ride, but Advanced RV has taken care of that. We take the multi-leaf spring from a Sprinter and put a, a unispring on that starts at about five-eighths of an inch in thickness over here and then goes up over the axle. There's a casting that, that connects it to the axle and then it goes down and when it ends up supporting the air springs, it's about an inch and a quarter thick. These air springs are, uh, are controlled with a computer uh, from a receiver air tank. So if you're going around, if you're coming off of a, an exit ramp or something, it'll le actually level and, and uh, level the vehicle. And it'll maintain the same ground clearance no matter what the load is because the computer compensates. Uh, there's a, a computer with desiccant air dryer there and that air goes into the receiver that operates the airbags. And then this is a, an anti-sway bar. You can see that that's a lot beefier than the anti-sway that's uh, typically comes with the sprinters. So this is a telescoping uh, leveler. Instead of having a single piston, there's uh, three pistons that telescope out. So the overall length of this is about two and a half inches shorter. So it can be mounted higher and, and actually has more ground, uh, more lifting uh, uh, range. So this is 10 and a half inches off the ground for ground clearance. And this mount is rugged and it mounts closer to the wheels for a better angle of departure. So Mike, what does this mean to the RVer? It means you've got a lot more ground clearance and you can uh, level in more uneven ground. This is great for boondockers, off-roaders, boondockers, off overlanders. Uh, overlanders, you can actually, if you get stuck, you can lift up a wheel and uh, throw something under it and uh, drive off. Front, rear, left and right. Here's something else really neat about these levelers. They will actually weigh your vehicle for you. You can tell how much weight is on each end of the RV. You don't have to go to a CAT scale anymore. You know how much gear you can bring, how much liquids and uh, water you can carry. Uh, it really makes a safer vehicle knowing that you're not over the maximum weight that is allowed for your RV. Okay now that you've seen the chassis stuff, Let's look at the finished B box, ready to go. What are, what are these things? Uh, these are uh, vortex disruptors. They're, they improve the handling and they also improve the fuel efficiency. Vortex and disruptors? So on a typical, on a van without these, you get airflow here and then there's negative pressure here and it comes back and it winds around and you get, uh, if that gets disrupted by a big truck or something, you get some sideways motion. This breaks that vortex so it doesn't create as much vacuum back here and it's not as uniform differential pressure. So it improves uh, wind handling with crosswinds and it improves gas mileage. So this is the control center and what we've done is we've taken all the verbiage out of our controls that anybody wouldn't, wouldn't understand. So. We developed our own uh, icons. And of course, this battery is power. A drop of water is water. Climate uh, with a, a thermostat and lighting. One thing we tried to do with, uh, with the B-Box is make sure that there's really clear and easy passage from the front uh, to the back. So we can use the front as a living space. Both uh, seats rotate around. Uh, there's a step here. That's a comfortable step. Uh, six feet uh, padded here, so you can step up and out of here. There's uh, about five feet wide here between uh, in the passageway into the van. Storage uh, here, 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 but very open. One of the most unusual things in this is our uh, shower recycling, our water system. And uh, this van has a lot of water capacity, 50 gallons of fresh water, but if you're off the grid for a long time, uh, this gives you the opportunity to use a recycled water. When we have the recycled water on, this uh, LED lights up, 
If you want a fresh shower, this is a typical mixing, vag, uh, mixing valve and fresh water nozzle. But with this nozzle, uh, the water is sumped out of the bottom of the shower pan. It goes through a stainless steel particulate filter that takes hair and other things out. It goes through another finer particulate filter and then a third particulate filter that has a carbon filter associated. And then the water goes through a UV sterilizer that kills bacteria and uh, virus. And then uh, by that time the water's cooled down a little bit. So it then goes through another on-demand heat exchanger that heats the water back to the desired temperature and then you shower with the same water. There's also a tank behind this panel, about two gallons, that uh, the recycled water gathers in and when you're done with your shower, if you flush the toilet, it automatically flushes the toilet with the recycled water and fills the tank with fresh water. So one question that I ask is, how long can you take a shower for? 20 minutes, a half an hour, uh, you know, whatever, uh, whatever works for you, I mean, whatever you need. How long can you keep using that uh, recycled water? Indefinitely. So it strikes me that after you have filled up your 50 gallon fresh water tank, you don't really have to plug into water for as long as you're out camping. I mean, if you're out on a month long trip, you can keep recycling the water for shower, for flushing the toilet. Uh, the only thing you have to do then is empty the gray tanks and the black tanks. With recycling uh, your shower water and using shower water for the toilet and the fact that there's 50, you're starting with up to 50 gallons of fresh water, you have a lot of time. Microwave, uh, GE, convective microwave. Uh, and then this is a uh, isotherm refrigerator and I really like the finish of the isotherms uh, better than some of the other ones um, and then uh, down below is a uh, and the seals get are very tight on the freezer but it's a, a good sized freezer and we try to do things so that they're ergonomic so the refrigerator is in a good place sometimes we'll put a drawer on the freezer to make it a little bit easier to get at huge stainless steel sink this is not a long counter, but when Marsha and I were camping in this a couple weeks ago, she said, I really love this huge countertop. And it, this is not such, it doesn't seem like a huge countertop, but it's probably five or six inches wider than the one in the van. So it's a square and it's much, uh, she found it much easier to use. A glass tile on the back uh, so that we can clean up any mess pretty easy. Um, all the windows open, um, screens and uh, uh, curtains for uh, uh, privacy. Uh, it's very light proof. Uh, the uh, faucet is a, is a Mullen faucet that has a, um, a sprayer on it. Uh, it swings out of the way. Uh, and so the big question that everybody has is where are the, where are the burners? Where uh, good question. Uh, there's a, a, a thing right here where we put an induction cooktop. And the conduction cooktop comes out, sits on top, plugs in, and you can cook uh, on here. And the, the other thing that's nice about it is if you're not cooking, you have a big counter. And if you're cooking spaghetti sauce, you can take it out on the picnic table and plug it into the outside outlet and use it. I really like having this induction cooktop down here, not up here, because I'm always uncomfortable using my top, my, whatever, whatever my burners are, as countertop. I'm afraid I'm going to damage it. Food's going to get down there. It just has never made me comfortable. So the ability to put this down, take it outside, wherever you need it, and it's out of the way or it's available when you need it and where you need it. Every van we build is custom, so if a client wants a, a built-in uh, cooktop, that's no problem, but nobody does. <laughs> Everybody feels like you do, Jennifer. Yeah, you just are worried that you're going to damage the top of it with your hot burners and yeah. you know, you're just concerned about it. Yeah. Every one of these is, is different and Marsha and I and our other folks got together and, and laid this one out like we thought we somebody might be interested. One of the things that we like is uh, to have, now this the wastebasket isn't in here, but we like to have a slide out wastebasket. There's quite a bit of room under the sink for uh, uh, much more than in a class B because the, the counter is wider. Um, the counter is wider and, and the bathroom is wider and the space, the aisle is wider than a typical class B. So it makes it 
really feel, uh, and th these drawers are deep because the counter is deep. And then this is a, bit, a good size drawer here. And uh, this is a this is the subwoofer for the awesome sound system. If somebody isn't into that, we certainly could make that a, a drawer or anything. But the whole thing is wide open. Everything here is custom. Cabinets, uh, because the walls are square, the cabinets are deeper and higher than a typical Class B. And uh, this is nice. Right yeah, there, that a, you've put a little bit of an edge so things, don't yeah, fall so out. things don't fall out. And you have pass through too. We have pass through. This saves a little bit of weight and also allows us to. It keeps stuff from sliding back and forth, but you can reach things from uh, the different cabinets. Um, I think that is such a great idea of having that path through it. Like hearing you say that it makes it a little bit lighter, and sometimes you do have something long that you want to stick through there. You've got room for it. Yeah. Great Wise point. use of space. When all the windows and doors are closed, this is a very tight van, and it's it's it, it, part of that is how uh, insula highly insulated it is. But all the doors are sealed, so when you close this up, uh, you the air becomes stale. So this is an air exchanger. It's a uh, fan with a heat exchanger. The air goes out, uh, and in the winter, it picks up the heat from the from inside here. And then when you bring clean air in, it picks that heat up. So it's about 80 plus percent efficient in transferring heat. Uh, if you're in the Upper Peninsula with the Wendlands uh, winter camping, uh, you don't have to crack a window and, and, and deal with the uh, uh, frost and stuff. This air exchanger will keep the heat in, but keep fresh air in. There's also in the front a uh, CO2 monitor, and it's tied to the air exchanger. And the bed goes into a full queen plus size bed. Now we stop it here typically and put fitted sheets on. There's slots under the mattress for sheets. So we put a, a fitted sheet on, and then uh, we put a, uh, this will have a headboard on it, we, we haven't installed it yet, but uh, we put a down duvet on here and uh, it's just way comfortable. Uh, one of the things that we didn't like about our factory built motorhomes was you had to take cushions and fit them in to make a bed and uh, I think Jennifer should try this bed out. <laughs> All right, this is this is the big test, the Jennifer test. The Jennifer is comfortable. Make oh. a pillow and put it under your... Get a pillow under here. Okay. Whew. Okay, oh. wait a second now. Move oh. over. Move over? Yeah. Oh my gosh, this is really soft. This is not, this is not hard at all. I think even Bo would like this. I picture... Bo can't come on this. I'm picturing a bow dog right between us. Or, yeah. Yeah, All right. um, this is comfortable. Natural latex. It's a very, uh, very Great. expensive. Uh, so, Mike, uh, would you shoot the rest of the tour? We're just going <laughs> to stay here for a little My while. Isn't it, isn't it nap time? <laughs> <laughs> what about lithium batteries? Everything is lithium. Uh, this one has about 13,000 kilowatt hours of storage. 13K? Uh, yeah, and it's uh, batteries are under the seat. The inverter's under the seat. This is a, a cooling for the inverter and the batteries. How big is the inverter? Uh, this one I think is 3,000 watts. Now you have all that lithium battery, but you have no solar on this. No, we don't. Uh, if you look at the cost of solar and the cost of the solar charger, and uh, depend, unless you're in the middle of the desert all the time, the efficiency, the solar is only 100% efficient when at noon, and you've got about five hours of solar capacity. So when you look at, and solar is about 21 or 22% efficient now, when you look at the cost of solar, the benefits of solar, it, it can extend in most of our installations, it can extend off the grid by 15 or 20%. So if, if your choice is to put solar on the top or put 20% more battery capacity in, 
it's cheaper to put 20% more battery capacity in typically. And how do you then charge those batteries without a, you don't have an outboard generator and there's no solar, how do they uh, charge? There's a separate alternator on the engine for dedicated to the batteries. And how long does it take to charge those batteries? Depending on the size, I think these are probably three and a quarter hours of driving uh, to charge from 10% to 100%. And when you are just running off the battery, how, how long can you stay out there off the grid? What about air conditioning, all that heavy usage? Air conditioning, you can get about 12 hours of air conditioning at 100% duty cycle with the batteries without the engine running on this. And I would imagine because of the insulation, you don't need to run 100% duty cycle on no, that. No, it's much more efficient, uh, and uh, especially if you have the window shades down, they're reflective on the outside. So we don't really know how long this will go with uh, with the air conditioner, but we we have tested it. I think we had it outside for six hours, uh, and uh, it was running. We, we had the temperature set at 55 degrees. It was an 80 de 80 or 90 degree day, and uh, I think there was 60 percent power left or something like that. So, so solar is often oversold to many. You know, it's cool. I, I love solar and uh, it, it's just an economic decision that we try to help clients figure out what their peak energy use is, what their average energy use is, and how long their batteries are going to last and how quick they would recharge. And with those calculations, and, uh, and then we have a, a real a test backed realistic idea of how long this, well, how much the solar is going to contribute. So, well, A good question for anybody considering an RV, and I'll ask this, is it better to invest in more battery than solar? Our clients generally make the decision that it's best to, to uh, invest in more battery. These are, these are huge windows. They are, and they're, uh, um, they seal very well. There are multiple seals on the bigger windows. And uh, they, if you look at, uh, I don't know if you can tell this, but there's about three quarters of an inch of uh, airspace in between. These are thermal windows. So they're, they're dual pane windows. How far will they open? They'll open to that point. Now, this must be a cover for the wheels. Jennifer, those are the wheel wells, you're right, and uh, they would be a little bit lower, but we want to make sure that there's a lot of insulation over the wheel wells for sound and for thermal insulation. What I noticed back here, this is very comfortable as a sofa, but these big windows, this is so pleasant to be able to look out and see what's going on, both sides, beautiful windows. And the television set is here with a sound bar up above. For you people who work on the road, this is the Wi-Fi Ranger. Now, Mike, one thing I didn't see uh, when I looked at the exterior is um, antennas. Where do you have all your antennas for the Wi-Fi? Because there's no metal in the roof other than some structure, all the antennas are uh, underneath the roof and under, and so it's all clean. There's no, uh, no exterior antennas. So this can be a stealth vehicle for camping. That's the, that's the objective, yep. I, I like that door. So this is uh, just one configuration. Uh, the next ones we're building have different doors, but we thought, we talked about what kind of access we want. So we put a door on here that gives us shelter. It's high enough. We, I stood out here. It's high enough so that I can stand under it. It's sloped so that the rain comes off. There's a little gutter across here to keep rain off of, from coming down through the hinges. And now we've got a, a staging area to load, or you could even sit under here with a couple chairs if it's raining. And uh, then there's storage uh, in this area. It's kind of full of uh, stuff right now, sorry. But, uh, and then this whole area here, this will have a, a headboard on it. But behind the headboard, I've had both of our bikes in here with, with the tires on them. And uh, so I don't know whether we'll hang bikes from the top or whether we'll use our bike racks we designed or whatever. But. And what I like seeing are the seat belts. It looks like you could get two or three people with seat belts back here. Three people with seat belts and the shoulder harnesses are actually on a steel frame that's tied into the frame of the whole thing. So it's uh, we really uh, try to make things, when we put seat belts in they're real. The center seat belts, you can't see this bar here that they're attached to, I think is a three quarter inch aluminum bar. This is a regular Sprinter and uh, this is how wide it is. Let's see if I can get uh, kind of even up here. 
And this doesn't take into consideration the running boards, which add another four or five inches on each side. And then... To the b box. The b box is, uh, is a, uh, a little bit wider than the Sprinter, but when you include the running boards, this is actually a few inches narrower. And how about the height? The height is under 10 feet on this one, and uh, the height of, it's about nine feet eight actually, and the height of the Sprinter with, with a low profile air conditioner is about nine feet eight. So so once again, we're talking, the B-Box is truly a Class B. So we told a lot of our supporters and followers that we're coming to see this, and they had a couple of questions. So question number one is, uh, a lot of them wondered, are you going to keep calling it the B-Box? We are. Uh, that's the name I came up with, and uh, uh, we did register it, so uh, we'll probably keep on with it, unless somebody names it something better. So we're open to new names. And another question don't get mad at me. They said, well, it's kind of ugly. <laughs> yeah, it's an ugly duckling. It's, uh, we hope it still uh, is, uh, uh, we think it's stealth enough to park in the city and uh, we put a little uh, not for hire DOT uh, mark on it just to kind of, and we're thinking about putting Ma's apple pies or something on there, but uh, yeah, it's, it's ugly if that's, uh, so you can, you can put anything you want on the side. You can, but we have to be careful. The insulation is so good here but if you put a dark color and the sun hits it uh, out in the desert, it could get over temperature for the material. So we'll put light colors on, we'll paint it or wrap it with light, light colors. Ballpark cost, that's the thing everybody wants to know. The ballpark cost of the, of the B-Box is going to be similar to the Sprinter vans that we build. Everyone is custom and when I give a price it, it, it includes a whole new rear suspension, air suspension, levelers, uh, big lithium batteries and uh, about 200 other things that most clients want. The last dozen or so vans that we built uh, were between $310,000 and just under $500,000. The median price, which means a price where just as many are below and just as many are above, is about $380,000. We'd love to have them cheaper. We'd love to do the same price as the factory people. And we're working on efficiency, but every time we get some cost out of it by increasing our production efficiency, a client asks for some neat thing that adds more time and, and money to it. So it's, uh, our, our clients are driving our, our, um, our innovation. So if somebody ordered one today, how long before they can pick it up? I think we have one B-Box that's not sold, that, that's a spec unit. And, uh, but other than that, about a year for a B-Box, uh, a year to a year and a half, depending on what configuration it is. And we're trying to get that down. We've hired some really new, great people, but it's, uh, it just takes a long time to do something by hand and, and with craftspeople. So what kind of mileage do you get on the B-Box? We've only put two tanks of, of diesel fuel through. On the last tank, we got a little over 16 miles per gallon. We hope it'll do better once it breaks in. Could you use another chassis, like the Ford Transit, or maybe the Ford F450? Yes, uh, we have uh, actually, we're talking to somebody now that wants to put it on a Unimog. Uh, the uh, uh, Fords, uh, the Transits, and the E450s, and other, other possibilities. So, kind of depends on how people want to travel. Uh, we love to, to put it on chassis where we know there's a high demand so the engineering can be spread out amongst multiple people. Last question, what about taking the whole B-Box off and putting it on maybe a new chassis that comes out uh, down the way or just taking it off and putting it in a field someplace? Great question, Mike. We have a client in California who wants us to do a, a plug-in removable uh, uh, camper uh, on his chassis so that if uh, Mercedes comes out with an electric vehicle in a few years or just to, because the vehicle depreciates, uh, then we can put this on a new vehicle and uh, save a lot of depreciation. So there is the brand new B-Box. Now this one's the prototype, but uh, as you heard Mike say, they are already taking orders and uh, we'll be seeing this on the road. Uh, pretty neat uh, vehicle. I am so glad that we had the opportunity to come and see this. It is, it is really fun.
It is not for everybody. It's expensive, but uh, lots of innovation, and uh, it's kind of neat to see what's possible as uh, new RVs are uh, being introduced into the marketplace. The Bee Box. Hey, we're Mike and Jennifer Wendland uh, reporting from Willoughby, Ohio, and the headquarters of Advanced RV. Thank you guys so much for watching. Do us a favor, give us a thumbs up on this video. Don't forget to subscribe to the RV Lifestyle channel here on YouTube. And when you do, click that bell icon. Then you'll be notified when we have new videos online. And we should tell everybody, if they have an RV uh, manufacturer whose products they'd like us to go see. We would the, love to go visit them. Yeah, we love doing factory visits. So let us know and we'll do our best to make that happen. Thanks for watching. Happy trails.